Hi, I'm Daniel Andrews, owner and creator of AndrewsFootball.com, and with the 16th pick, who will the Carolina Panthers take? Uh, this is this is a, a really interesting situation because the Panthers could go in a variety of different directions here. Uh, if, if you've been following my mock draft, I, I print out on the thumbnail uh, everybody I've done so far, so so you see who's available. Uh, and also, if you go to my website, www.ninjasfootball.com, I have my mock, third mock draft uh, that I did earlier this week available, so you can just you can actually see who I'm picking. But uh, I'm doing this video kind of illustrate why I'm picking a player. And um, let's be very clear: there's a variety of different directions they could go. They need help in a lot of different places. And uh, you know, here's here's some players that they, that they're going to take a look at. Okay. Um, you, you have Greedy Williams, who's the number one corner. Usually the number one corner in the draft is not available at 16. Now, now some people are going to say, no, it's DeAndre Baker. And I respect your opinion, but I, I think most people feel that Greedy Williams is the number one corner in this draft. The thing is, though, look at the number one corners drafted the last two years. Marshawn Lattimore, uh, Denzel Ward. It, I mean, these guys would be head and shoulders above Greedy Williams. And, and I think the Carolina Panthers would really benefit from drafting a corner, especially your number one value at, at number one corner, the value at 16, it, it's there. But this guy isn't the same caliber of player as Denzel Ward or definitely not, not Lattimore. You're not getting a, a lockdown number one corner. Now, Williams could be that, and I'm just completely wrong. But from what I've seen, he's not, he's not, he's not at the same caliber of player. So that, that's, that's, an, that's a, definitely a possibility. Montez Sweat, I've seen tons of mock drafts where he's in the top 10. How, how much that heart condition uh, scare teams off, I, I don't know. Obviously, I'm not a doctor, but uh, I have a feeling that that might be part of it. But uh, he has some issues as a pass rusher. I mean, the Combine act absolutely blew up his draft stock. So you're saying, Dan, if he's available at 16, of course we're going to take him. He's in play. If he's available at 16, the Carolina Panthers are going to debate this, okay? Greedy Williams, Montez Sweat, they're going to talk about this guy, okay? Both Iowa tight ends. Greg Olson is 34. Greg Olson, one of my favorite players. But, I mean, let, let's let's be honest here. I mean, what's what's he done the last couple of years? I mean, he's played, according to, according to this, he's played 16 games the last two years, 44 catches, Barely 500 yards, not even 500 yards, five touchdowns. I mean, th this guy was one of the best tight ends in football for a long time, but he's going to be 34. So, I mean, they're going to draft a tight end some sometime during the draft, or they may get one or trade for one in free agency. But you 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 got to move on, un unfortunately. Greg Olson, one of my favorite players, an excellent tight end, but I, he, he, Father Time's undefeated. Um, linebacker's a possibility. No, there's no safeties on the board. Is 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 this is this where the Panthers may want to draft the safety here? Uh, Funches is gone. Is there a wide receiver? Nikhil Harry, one of my favorite draft players. This would be perfect for Camp Newton. Uh, a six foot four guy with with great hands. Now you you could say, well, you just got rid of Funches. Funches wasn't the same type of receiver. Funches was more athlete than than receiver. If you paid attention to his career at Michigan. He was actually a tight end, moved to receiver, and he was extremely raw. And Nikhil Harry, much more polished player, probably the shortest hands in the draft, which is great for Cam Newton. I, I think if I'm Cam Newton, I'm like, get this guy. You know, and I know they need help at receiver, but I really like uh, DJ Clark. Uh, I like Curtis Samuel quite a bit. Um, so so you, you have some options there. But, I mean, is Nikhil Harry, if he's available, are they going to talk about him? Sure, I, I think they are. But for me, in my mock draft for the 16th pick in the 2019 NFL draft, I got the Carolina Panthers taking Greg Little, the, the left tackle out of Ole Miss. And is this too high for Greg Little? Yes. But in, in my mock draft, though, uh, Andre Dillard's gone. Jawan Taylor's gone. Jonah Williams is available. Yes, I know I had him going to Jacksonville, but I changed my mind. And I got Jawan Taylor there. And I, you know, if they, I'm gonna tell you something. If they think Jonah Williams is a left tackle, they're gonna draft him. But I, I, I think he's going to be a guard in the NFL. Okay, I, my personal humble opinion, I'm seeing a guard, and he's going to be a great one. Okay, Cody Ford's gone. Uh, Dalton Risner is available. Uh, there's a few other names. Caleb uh, McGarry. 
Um, uh, the, oh, I, I drew a plank. I didn't write his name down because I haven't. I, I saw his name earlier in the year, the, the left tackle out of West Virginia, but I, I've seen a lot of mocks him going second, third round. I haven't seen a lot of mocks of Greg Little going the first round. And even though eight, uh, even though I'm I mean, eighteen, I'm sorry, sixteen, even though it's extremely high, this is a plug and play left tackle. You don't believe me? Take a look at Cam Robinson. Yes, I know he was a second round pick, but uh, this the, if you're if all your options are eliminated and you need a left tackle, who's a plug-and-play guy? If these guys are gone, it's Greg Little because this is a guy you could play and say, hey, you're my starting left tackle. Protect Cam Newton. Now, they, here's, here's another thing. is yeah, I'm fully aware that they, they had a tackle last year, but I, I really don't believe that Tyler Moten they're, – they're not. I don't think he's a left tackle. I think he's a right tackle, and I think that's the best fit for him. Greg Little on the left side, could he be a stud like Karen Robinson? Absolutely. Now, I'd say Carolina Panthers don't take Greg Little. I think Greg Little's going to be a first-round pick. I really do. I, I know I'm, I'm probably the only person saying this and like, Dan, you didn't – this guy's a former five-star player with the athleticism to play left tackle. That's rare. E even in this draft, which is really loaded with offensive linemen, Greg Little, I think, will be a first-round pick. Now, here's the thing. Let's say you're the Carolina Panthers and you need a left tackle. All right, you're, you're convinced draft day, we're going after a left tackle. You have to trade up. In, in my mock draft, if you look, I do have Greg Little because I'm not doing I'm not doing trades. Andrews football is anti-trade this year. But if you are going to do trades, and and I'm going to break this down after after uh, I do all 32 teams, all 32 picks, I'm going to break down and do a separate video on who's going to trade up, who's going to trade down, give you some ideas of what what could happen in the draft. The Carolina Panthers, if they need a left tackle, they are going to trade up. I don't know if there's a particular player, if they got one or two available, but here's what's going to happen if they decide they want to draft left tackle. Right after the New York Giants pick a quarterback at six, all right, or let's say, okay, you know what? Let's say a Giants trade, okay? Whoever they trade with, more likely it's going to be the Jets. All right, after the Jets pick, Jacksonville at seven, that's, where you, that's the first number you call. Okay, that's the first one you call. And the reason why is that Jacksonville pick has a draft chart value of 1500 Your first round pick is 100 Your second round pick is 430 So you call Jacksonville, hey, I got one and a two. Okay, you have an extra third round pick. And, and here's what you try to do. Hey, will you take the one and the two? Jacksonville you lowball Jacksonville. I mean that that that's you know that's that's a that's a you know that that's a debate 101. That's negotiation 101. You don't offer your best offer right out the gate. So you say, hey, what about one and a two for your for your number one? What do you think? I, you may want to trade down. Let's say you say no. Realistically, your best option's Detroit because Detroit is a team that could be very interested in trading down. Plus that that draft. Value for number eight, that's fourteen hundred. You have a thousand with your first. You have a four thirty with your second. That's a good trade. But you call Jacksonville, you lowball Jacksonville. See what they want to do. See if you can get creative. I wouldn't give up next year's number one. But you know what? It, you know you, you may decide. Hey, look, you know heads are going to roll if if we don't win this year. So maybe you want to get rid of next year's number one. Keep that number two for a tight end or a wide receiver. Or, or you may want to draft a corner. There's going to be some good corners available that are second and third day draft picks that, that are going to be longtime players in this league. There's some good players, and I'll touch base on that later. But I would strongly recommend you, you lowball Jacksonville, then be serious with Detroit because a one and a two for Detroit. If you're dead set on left tackle, Detroit's where you want to go. Now, you know, of course, Buffalo is an option at nine, but I say you start Jacksonville, lowball them, be for real with Detroit. And then from there, you, you know, you, you, let's say you get Buffalo, you have that extra pick in the third round, the 36th pick in the third round. Yeah, that's your extra one. Boom, you, that, that's a trade. Um, another, but here's the thing, Buffalo may not want that. Throw out another trade option. If Miami trades up at 13 to get a quarterback, whoever they trade down with, that's a first and a third. 
And, and, and that's, that's definitely Detroit. Detroit may want to trade down twice, and I'll kind of touch base on that in another video. So let's say at 16, the Carolina Panthers are available, and they went and got a tackle in free agency, or they traded for a tackle, and tackle's off the board. Or they want to draft tackle in the second round. And, and that's possible. That's possible. Who do you take at 16? If, if it's not Greg Little, let's say you have Greg Little lit, rated in the second round, like, like most people do. I think, I think he's going to play. I think he's going to be a day one. I think he's going to come off the draft board day one. But let's say day two. Who do I got? And the answer would be Noah Fant, uh, the, the tight end out of Iowa. And, and I know some of you are going to say, what about Hawkinson? He's about Okay. I like Hawkinson better. And for most teams, I like Hawkinson better. For Carolina specifically, I, I like Fant better. And the reason why is that you have a highly athletic, big-armed quarterback in Cam Newton who needs a safety valve. Fant is more receiver than, than pure tight end. And he's, he's a little faster. He basically would be used as a big wide receiver, a lot like Greg Olson was. He would be your safety valve from day one. You could split him out wide. You could try to teach him the, the block. I'm not saying he's a horrible blocker, but uh, I think he would be more of a, a safety valve for Cam Newton, a guy that would be able to adjust the passes that aren't perfectly thrown. Because accuracy is not a strong suit. Let, let's be clear. You're not dealing with Drew Brees here. You're dealing with a guy who can run. He could throw deep downfield. Fant, I think, would be a better fit for Carolina. So if you're not in love with the tackle, you, you go for Fant if he's available. And, and I think at 16, he will be available. So those are my predictions for the Carolina Panthers. I think they're going to go with, with a tackle. I think that, in, and if they do for a go for a tackle, they're going to trade up. But at 16, I think you're going to take the best player available if you're dead set on tackle, and that would be Greg Little, according to my draft. So if you're a subscriber to Andrews Football, you already know you're one of the greatest people on planet Earth. I appreciate everything that you've done. I love how everything's been going with my channel. I've been getting a lot of new subscribers lately. I want to thank every single one of you. All your wildest dreams are scientifically proven to come true, but if you're new to my channel or you're a Carolina Panthers fan or you're an NFL mock draft fan or you're just a fan of football in general or you'd like seeing me in this awesome cowboy hat, there's this little button right down here. Check it out. See it. And then, bam! Hit that button. Become one of the greatest people on planet Earth. Wait till tomorrow where I break down the 17th pick in the NFL draft. I'll see you tomorrow.